Hello, my name's Darren Bug, and this is an updated version of my film on how to file your accounts at Companies House. Now, several people have contacted me and asked for some clarification uh, related to my previous film about filing your accounts. So this is a brand new updated version and it goes into a bit more detail about what to do with your accounts. The whole film lasts less than 10 minutes um, because that's all it's going to take to actually file your accounts. And I say this to people all the time, don't waste your money on an expensive accountant to do things like um, filing your annual return. Um, which is also known as your confirmation statement and also don't waste money on an accountant um, filing your accounts if they're very very basic because you can actually do it yourself. Now obviously this doesn't apply if you're filing accounts to HMRC for tax purposes because then it is very very useful to have an accountant who can advise you on taxation. But just for filing your accounts at Companies House or filing your annual return at Companies House it's very 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 easy to do it yourself and it takes about 10 minutes. So my advice really is use an accountant for the things that they can help you with but don't waste money on an accountant for things that you can do yourself. I'm not saying don't use an accountant, I'm just say, saying just, just use the accountant for the things that you are going to benefit from. And obviously something like taxation, that is important. So when you're filing your accounts to HMRC, then of course an accountant is important. But with Companies House, it is something that's, that's totally different. It's very simple. If you've only just set up your company, you might not even be aware that you actually do have to file two sets of accounts. One to HMRC, which is for your tax bill, and another one to Companies House, which is a lot more straightforward. So this is how you do it in under 10 minutes, and it doesn't cost a penny. OK, first of all, go on to Google or whatever search engine you happen to use. Just type in Companies House it comes up straight away click on company's house and you will then get all these different options that you can do at company's house so you can change your company name you can close your company uh, you can file your confirmation statement if you want to know how to do that then have a look at my other film that is also on YouTube and um, this used to be called an annual return now this does cost money this costs 13 pounds 13 pounds a year you have to pay a fee but other than that um, you can do it yourself in about five minutes and also you can find out company information, so if you want to do research on other people's companies, it's all public information. Now, first important thing to stress, you have two different passwords on Companies House website. You have your password to log on, but you also have a separate different password for the web filing service. And I've lost track of the number of times people have approached me and said, I can't get on to my account, I cannot file my annual return, I cannot file my company accounts. And that is probably because you're putting in the wrong password. So bear in mind there are two different passwords, one to actually get onto the company's house website and another one when you're actually filing something. This is a security feature, so if somebody found out your password for logging on, they wouldn't know what your password is for actually filing accounts and filing your confirmation statement. So just remember that to begin with, you may have a different password. OK, so this is really simple. Click File Your Accounts. There's a little bit of information. Things that you need before you start. Well, the most important thing that you must have before you start is your authentication code. You cannot get this online. You have to contact uh, Companies House and they will post uh, an authentication code to you. So it comes in the, the old-fashioned Royal Mail and it could take up to seven days to arrive. So if you're totally new to this, I strongly advise you um, apply to Companies House for an authentication code as soon as possible, especially if you're getting close to the deadline for filing accounts. Um, because obviously if you miss your deadline, you could be in trouble, you could get fined. And at the end of the day, it's, it's completely free. It just requires doing it in advance. It can take up to seven days to actually get your authentication code. Once you've got that code, make a note of it, keep it safe, keep it somewhere secret, because you can use the same code every year. You don't have to apply for a new code every year. It's the same code every year. So keep it safe, but keep it secret, because it is a bit like having a password. OK, so before you start, you've got your authentication code, you know the correct password for web filing, you should know your company number, click start. 
Now, it's, it asks me straight away, do I want to file my corporation tax accounts as well? No, I definitely do not. This is something that is done by an accountant, or, or at least if, if you are very knowledgeable um, about taxation, and if you have a very simple small company you might want to do it yourself I always advise using an accountant to make sure you pay the right amount of tax so I'm going to click no save and continue right which type of accounts have you prepared well this is going to be pretty simple as well it won't be full accounts because if you're doing full accounts that means you've got a pretty big company and if you've got a, a company that is big enough to do full accounts then you'll almost certainly either be using an accountant to do it or you will have a financial director or you'll have somebody working for your company who does that so it's not going to be full accounts because you won't be doing it um, it could be dormant company accounts if your company um, is dormant so your company is still on record at company's house but you um, you're not trading it's basically for for example if somebody decides to take a year out it could be maternity leave there could be some other reason why they want to take some time away from running their company but they don't want to close the company altogether so you can make your company dormant and that's very very simple to do and then when you decide to start trading again you just go back to being undormant to being a trading company so a dormant company account is a company that still exists but they're not trading at the moment a bridged account could be a bridged account so that's for shorter accounts but again you might probably be using an accountant if you are going to file a bridged account. So for most people watching this film, it's going to be micro entity accounts. And I'll explain what that means in a moment. So I'm going to click micro entity accounts, save and continue. And then here it mentions about the web filing service. And it says here, allow five days for delivery of your authentication code. I personally would allow seven just to be safe, especially if there's a postal strike or if there's some problem with um, with the postal system. Allow seven days. It says five, but I advise just allowing a little bit longer. And there we go. So file micro entity accounts. So this is where you have to put all your details in. You go through all the security checks. So here's my email address and I'm now going to put my password in and I stress it is the password for web filing it is not the password for entering company's house site I've, I've said it twice already but remember you have two different passwords okay then you sign in to your company well you might be in Scotland or Northern Ireland I would guess most people will be in England and Wales my company was actually registered in in Wales for um, a sort of a technical reason but um, there's a good chance that if you're watching this film it's going to be England Wales if you are registered in Scotland or Northern Ireland then obviously you just click one of these but I'm going to click England and Wales put in my company number and then it's the authentication code this is the really important bit you have to get this by post and obviously I'm not going to show you what my code is because this is rather like a password and so I stress keep a note of this for future use but keep it secret as well it's, it's as important as your password and then click sign in and it just takes a few moments to come up but don't panic don't worry it is a little bit slow but it will come up eventually so here's my company that I'm going to give an example for now um, for security reasons I'm not going to put actual figures in I'm just going to put zero everywhere um, and that's just to, to keep my financial information private for the time being in this film but it's just an example of how to do it so uh, last week I filed my confirmation statement and there's another film on YouTube that shows you how to do that that costs 13 pounds it's very very simple to do um, you can do it in under five minutes if you're quick and it says here what the date is well that was very recent I don't have to um, do it again for quite some time now so um, I've got plenty of time before I have to do the next one my accounts are up to date but um, at the time I'm making this particular film I've only got a month to um, to file these accounts so I'm going to show you now just an example of how I'm going to do it today for this film I'm just going to put zeros in but um, then when I do it properly um, obviously I'll put in real figures so file company accounts um, and it's saying I can no longer now file abbreviated accounts well I've already said I'm going to do um, micro entity accounts anyway and this is the important bit when I was explaining there are four different types of accounts well if your company is not trading at the moment it's easiest of all really simple just click on dormant accounts and that will take you about two minutes 
abridged accounts well again i would think that most people watching this film won't be filing abridged accounts um you might be but i think it's much more likely that you'll be filing micro entity accounts if it's full accounts then um, don't bother watching this film at all because if you're filing full accounts then you're almost certainly a qualified accountant anyway um, or you've got somebody like a financial director or somebody who's fully trained who's going to do it for you. So it's very likely that people watching this film will either be filing dormant accounts or micro-entity accounts and you can read it here, the condition for micro-entity your turnover is no more than 632,000 a year your balance sheet total is no more than 316,000 and your average number of employees is no more than 10. So I think for most people watching this film, that is what you're going to be doing. Micro entity accounts could be abridged, um, possibly dormant, but it's very unlikely you'll be watching this film if you're going to file full accounts because you probably have a lot more accountancy knowledge than what I have already. OK, file micro entity accounts and it repeats the information here again. It's also given it in euros if you are trading in euros. OK, it's got to be um, after the uh, 30th of September 2013, which I'm sure it will be. And again, the, the information I've already given you, average number of employees during the year is 10. So that means you can go over 10 or you could go under, but the average number of employees in the previous year for the, for the, the year that you're filing the accounts for is 10. And I've given you the figures already. You can read them there. And so again, file micro entity accounts. And this is the bit where you fill in the information and uh, quite a lot of people have asked me how to do this um, well to be perfectly frank if you aren't sure of your figures you need to get this information ready first do not start this process until you have your figures in front of you so what might be a good idea is to actually take a screenshot of this now and then you'll know what figures you need beforehand before you actually get around to filing don't attempt to do this until you've got your figures in front of you so take a screenshot of this now and then you know the information you need beforehand. OK, so the date of the balance sheet, which has come up automatically. My accounts, by the way, run um, annually from um, for particular reasons. When I set up my company many years ago, um, I set it up to run from the 1st of January to the 31st of December. Um, a lot of people do it from April to April. Um, if you're running a new company, you might not realise that you can actually choose whatever date um, to run your accounts. I chose, I set up my company uh, right at the start of the year, so it made sense to do it from 1st of January to 31st of December. But um, a lot of people do it from April to April because then it coincides with your taxation accounts. And as I said at the start, that's totally different. That is for um, HMRC, it's for tax purposes, it's, it's different altogether. This is um, purely for Companies House, um, and so you could have a different date. So remember that as well. Um, your date for filing accounts to HMRC is obviously running April to April, the normal tax year, but um, the date of accounts for Companies House might be different, and in my case they are different because my company runs uh, my company tax year, sorry, my uh, my company accounting year runs from 1st of January to the 31st of December. So this is the bit where I'm just going to put zeros in for now. I'm going to do this again later um, with the correct figures. But just for the sake of privacy, I'm going to show you now um, how to, to do it just using zeros. So obviously you've got your called up share capital, not paid. Um, fixed assets and current assets. Well, you should know what this means. You shouldn't be run, running a business if you don't actually know and what fixed assets and current assets are. Fixed assets, I mean, obviously, if you're not sure, you must talk to a qualified accountant, but it, it's things like if you own your own office, if you if your company has company vehicles, cars, um, I don't know, uniforms, the office equipment, computers, but they have to be owned by your company. So remember, that's important. If, um, for, if for example, you're a one-man band or a one-woman band and you're working from home and you, you just happen to be using your laptop computer, that, that isn't a fixed asset unless it's actually owned by the company. And that's important to remember. So don't look around your, your room at home and look at all your electronic equipment and, and put the value here unless it's actually owned by the company. Current assets, well, the obvious one is how much money you've got in the bank, in your business bank account, of course. Um, there are other types of current assets. Again, if you don't know 
what that means, you need to look it up. It's something, really, if, if you don't know what fixed assets and current assets are, you shouldn't really be running a business. And then you've got your pre prepayment and uh, crude income, which again, you should know these figures. Creditors uh, amounts falling due within one year. So again, you should know um, what amounts falling due within the next year for your creditors. And then that brings up the net current assets or liabilities, obviously in brackets means liabilities. If it's a minus figure, net current assets, if it's a positive figure. Um, and then total assets, la uh, less current liabilities. This will all come up automatically when you fill in the other figures. Then creditors amounts falling due after more than one year, which again, you should know this, um, that you, should, you really do need to know these figures. Once um, you've done it once, it becomes really simple. What some people do is they use an accountant to do it for the first year um, and then they can do it themselves in following years, especially if it's a very small company. You only really need an accountant to give you these figures once. Um, and then for future years, you can just use your accountant for taxation um, and you can fill in these figures yourself. Provision for liabilities, this might be zero. It's, it obviously depends on your company and obviously accruals and deferred income as well. Um, if you don't know what it means, um, Google it or ask your accountant. And then again, that automatically comes up with your net total, uh, your total net assets, which I've just put zero for everything for now, just so you can see how to do it. And then capital, capital and reserves. And again, I'm just going to put zero in for now. Then you put in your average number of employees. Um, well, again, you if you don't know that, you really are in trouble. Um, you should know how many employees you've had. And, and obviously, as I said, that, that figure could change. I mean, you could have one tax year where you have eight employees and then you take on another two um, and then one leaves and then one extra joins and you end up with 12 employees. If it's over 10, then you can't file micro entity accounts anyway. Um, you shouldn't be doing that so it's got to the average has got to be under 10 for the whole year i'm just going to put zero um if you are paying yourself a salary then put yourself down as one so if say you're working on your own but you pay yourself a salary every month then it's going to be one because you actually count as an employee yourself so remember that you are an employee if you take a salary so you could be it could be your company but you're still counted as an employee um, but I'm just going to put zero for everything now. Um, and then you have to just tick these boxes. Um, really straightforward. I mentioned um, already what all these mean. So you don't don't need to worry too much. I mean, obviously read them before you tick them, as with anything. Um, but it's just saying that you, you directors of the company, which might just be you on your own, uh, acknowledge your responsibilities. You're going to comply with the Companies Act. Um, and the accounts have been prepared in, in accordance with the provisions blah 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 you can read it yourself you are going to tick all of those um, read them understand what they mean but but whatever happens you are going to tick them all then you put the date in there you've got a little box Tuesday today's date put in there um, name of approving director I'll put in my own name which is Darren Liebug uh, if there's any other director of the company, then they have to go in as well. Um, I'm not talking about a company secretary. I'm not talking about um, somebody who just helps you in the office. I'm talking about somebody who is listed as a director at company's house. If they're not actually listed as a director of your company, do not put their name in there because that's really going to confuse company's house if you put the name of somebody and they're not listed as a director. Some people, it could be like, uh, for example, two partners, two, two people who are married and one of them is listed as a director and the other one calls themselves a director but isn't actually listed. Make sure that the person is actually listed as a director. In the case of my company, there's two of us. We, we also have a company secretary, but they're not, uh, they don't have director status. So they don't get put down there, even though it is a company secretary. Um, and then you click on uh, validate and continue, unless you want to provide any footnotes. And so here, if I click on provides footnotes, it gives you some more options, like for example, any guarantees, advances and credits, um, and any off-balance uh, sheet arrangements. Now, I think it's unlikely you'll want to put anything in here. And this is where you might possibly want some professional advice if you are going to add that. But for most people watching this film, you're not going to need to put any footnotes. And then you just click on validate and continue. 
Um, now, I, for this, um, for the purposes of this, I'll just show you what happens. But um, then from then onwards, um, you basically have to just um, confirm by putting in your password uh, and authentication code again. So here are the figures. I'm not going to validate it. Um, because these figures aren't actually correct. I've just put zero in just to show you how to do it. Um, but then obviously at that point you just check everything. If there's anything wrong it will actually come up here in yellow and show you. So it's saying capital and reserves are zero. Do you wish to continue? Well that's one. Um, capital and reserves chances are it's not going to be zero unless it's a dormant company. If your company's dormant it probably will be but otherwise um, that is not going to be the case so obviously you go back to the top and you look at the capital and assets and put in the correct figures and the reserves sorry. Um, and then once you've got it all correct you click validate and continue again. It'll ask for your password. Remember to put the right password in and then you authenticate, oh, I can't say it, authenticate, authenticate. Um, remember the code, you must get the code uh, a week in advance by post. You can't get it by email, you can't get it online, you must get it by post from Company's House. And that's all you have to do. There's no fee to pay. Um, you can do the whole thing in about 10 minutes, um, but you do need to do the background first. So I suggest what I would do now is take a screenshot of what's in front of you on screen get the correct figures to fill in here and get them ready beforehand and you should know all these figures. I mean some of them might be zero if you, if you for example if you're working from home using your own laptop that you bought yourself then um, you might not have any assets, you might not have any fixed assets anyway. You're definitely going to have current assets because you'll have some kind of money in the bank. Um, if you haven't then you might as well have a dormant company. Um, but you might not have any fixed assets. So most companies have some fixed assets but it's going to be probably something quite basic, a bit of computer equipment, some printers, um, could be some marketing materials, leaflets, brochures, um, it could be something like a, a company car. Um, there's all sorts of things. If you own your own office, um, obviously then you're going to have quite big figures. If, if you actually own the building that you are working from, then that could um, be a large figure. I'm not talking about your house. If you're working from home, that's different. But if you uh, if you own a, a separate office and you're not renting it, then that's going to be quite a large figure. Some people it might be zero. Um, probably it's going to be a few thousand just to take into account your laptop and, and that type of thing. And then again, current assets, just what you've got in the bank. The other things, pretty straightforward. Some of them are going to be zero anyway for a lot of people. Um, once you start filling in the figures, you'll see what I mean. It comes up with the automated figures. So net current assets and total assets, that will come up automatically when you fill in the other boxes. So you don't even have to worry about that that comes up for you and that's it number of employees date um, which is obviously today's date whatever that may be um, put your name don't put any directors there unless they are actually listed as directors validate and continue there's no fee to pay you have to do this once a year um, if you're not sure at all if anything doesn't make sense you can read up on what these things mean quite easily um, or if you're really uncertain get your accountant to do it for you for the first year and um, then you'll know the figures for the following year because you'll actually have these figures in your accounts um, and then you can fill it in yourself for future years and just use your accountant um, for HMRC for taxation purposes. Just to finish off, I always say this on my films, I am not a qualified accountant. I'm uh, an entrepreneur. I'm a business person. Um, I run several companies. This is just one of the smaller companies I run. Um, but I'm not uh, financially qualified. So if you're not sure about anything, make sure you use somebody who has the correct financial qualifications. Main purpose of this film is just to show how easy it is to do your um, accounts for Company's House. And also the two things you have to do, your accounts for Company's House and also your annual return. Um, and both of them are really easy to do. You can do them yourself. You can do the whole lot in about 25 minutes and it could save you hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pounds on what an accountant will charge you for doing it. I hope you found this useful. Uh, remember to use a proper accountant if, if you want uh, more in-depth information, especially for your tax bill. Uh, but hopefully this will be very helpful and hopefully it will save you some money.